my name is Robert Estes, and we're here at the Actors Ensemble of Berkeley, the Live Oak Theater, and we're on the set of Curse of the Starving Class. And this play is going to open April 23rd. You might wonder what the title Curse of the Starving Class means. Well, it's quite an interesting title. Unlike other modern playwrights, including Shepard and other plays, this pl title actually is discussed quite a bit in the play. The mother, Ella, talks about the curse. The father talks about being poisoned. The daughter, Emma, talks about the starving class. So even though we hear a lot of discussion, though, I still think it's a little bit of a MacGuffin. That's something Alfred Hitchcock called in his movies. It's a plot device that seems very important, but actually leads us to a bigger story. The family members interact so closely. We have a promo line we use called too near in name, too dear in blood. And it's actually true in this play. Wesley, Weston, Emma, Ella. But they're a little bit too close throughout the play. And so for me, the family reminds me of a Chekhov play. Because they have moments where they try to connect with each other. But just for a moment they do connect. They have empathy. But immediately they seem to go back into their own world. And of course many people have commented on this play as being an American version of the cherry orchard. We have kind of a foolish family that fritters away their great orchard and their great home. Now, who's in the play? We have a wonderful cast. I'm so excited by our cast. And I first have to say that for the character of Emma, the young woman, we're very lucky. And her name is Sion Tolisfrud. And she's doing a fantastic job. And we're all delighted with her in rehearsal. And we can't wait to see her on stage as Emma. I don't know where the money goes to. We're not part of the starving class. Uh, for Weston, we have Andy Shapiro. Weston is a father. And Andy Shapiro is a great Weston because he's that way in his own life. I mean, I don't even know why we have a refrigerator in this house. All it's good for is slamming. Slams all day and through the night. Slam, slam, slam. We have Holly Bradford playing Ella. And what I love about her is that Ella can be a beaten down character, but Holly is such a wonderful actress. She's bringing out the determination and the grit of Ella. It's crap! I've been down there all night trying to pull Emma back together, and I've gone back to Mr. Hyde, Mr. Goody Two-Shoes, Mr. Mia Coppa himself. Well, you can kiss off with that crap, because I'm not buying it. Would you like some coffee? No, I don't want any goddamn coffee! We have Thomas Art, and he's a young guy. And what I love about him is he has a natural comic presence about him. And Wesley can always fall into being the mythological saver of the family home. Eat American lamb! 20 million coyotes can't be wrong. <coughs> You're out of luck. Santa Claus hasn't come yet. So those are the family members, I think they're all very strong. But what I'm happy about in, in this production is the, the, what you might call the supporting characters are also strong. And we have Brian McManus playing Taylor, who's trying to become something that he's not. And so Brian's trying to become this American, but we can't help but know he's kind of Irish. My name's Taylor. I'm your mother's lawyer. Then we have Ellis. He's played by Dean Creighton. And Ellis is a bar owner. He owns the Alibi Club. And he's the tough guy in the play. He's a guy who's broken backs. And Dean can come on stage and immediately take over the stage. <laughs> uh, you must be the wife of kids. Name's Ellis. I run the Alibi Club downtown. You must know it, huh? Well, your old man knows it, that's for sure. Down there pretty near every night. Regular steady. Well, I always wondered where he slept. We have Sergeant Malcolm, and he is kind of a symbol for indifferent stability. He comes on in a short scene, but he immediately establishes this great feeling of authority, but also indifference. And so the family doesn't really have anybody to turn to in their trouble. Excuse me. Is this Tate? Yes. Are you Mrs. Tate? Yes, I am. Sorry, but not but there's no door. It's all right. I'm Sergeant Malcolm. I have a phone. Finally, we have the characters we call the thugs, and that is Emerson and Slater, played by Jerome Solberg, 
and Matthew Sarans. And these characters are at the end of the play, and I can't really tell you much about them because it would take away from your fun of seeing the play. But all I can say is they're having a fantastic time, and they will be the most memorable thugs you've ever seen. Who are these men, Weston? Weston. You're Weston. Now you might ask, what are the biggest challenges for a director in this play? Well, first of all, one of the biggest challenges is that this is a big production. And for a theater, community theater, there's all different kinds of elements. You will see bacon frying on stage. You will have ham and eggs on stage. You'll have busted doors on stage. So we have all kinds of technical challenges in this play to make it right. And we've done a beautiful job. And we have a wonderful backdrop by Xu Ping. Um, and it features an insane horse, which comes directly from the play. So we've created a beat up kitchen. You can see the table here, good old for Micah. You see the refrigerator back here. But as a director, one of the great challenges is not getting caught up too much in all the talk of the curse or the starving class or great mythological components, but actually keeping the play honest from every moment to every moment. And part of that keeping it honest is, is honoring the contradictions in the play. And I think that's the key to the play, is honoring this strange, beautiful, surreal play called The Curse of the Starving Class. <laughs>